Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this last lesson for this theme on the covenant. Before we begin, shall we bow our heads for prayer? Dear God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for these showers of blessing that come our way. Thank you for the good night rest. On this Holy Sabbath day, may you descend your Holy Spirit upon us to strengthen us, to come close to us, to lift us up to the highest place in heaven, to have communion with you, to understand the covenantal relationship that you have given us. Help us to walk close to you daily. And may our choices that we make be God-centered, Christ-centered, daily and every day, as we pray for ourselves and intercede for others. May we become channels of blessing today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me share screen. Okay, today uh, is the last lesson for the theme on covenant. Today is also the final week of the second quarter. Next week, we will study a new theme, right? So what will we be covering? We will talk about why should we feel joy? On what basis can we claim that promise? What is it about the covenant that we should that should free us from the burden of guilt. And what does it mean to have a new heart? So to recap, eh, we have actually many covenants, but the four major covenants are actually uh, the Novaic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, and the new covenant. Okay, These are the symbols of the covenant. The uh, Noah covenant, we have the symbol of the rainbow. The Abrahamic covenant, we have circumcision. The Mosaic covenant is the Sabbath. Whereas the new covenant is the bread and the wine. Okay. So these are the covenants we have covered so far. Jesus established a new covenant with his blood, and this covenant is real. It is not something theoretical, a philosophical doctrine, or just a lesson. This covenant with God transforms our lives and renews us. So what does the new covenant bring to our life? These are the five things. Joy, liberation from guilt, new thoughts, the hope of eternal life and a mission to share. So these are the five areas we will cover. Okay. Paul, since you're the first one to enter our study, could you turn, could you read our memory text for today? Paul Teo. Okay. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the ship. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will go in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes in only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it and have it the full. Correct. So this is a very common uh, promise, eh? especially the last one, eh? verse 10. I come that they may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus wants us to give us a abandoned life, okay? Abundant life. Okay, Mrs. Fong, could you read this also? This will be the text for the, the first part of our study. Mrs. Anita Fong, could you read for us? 
No, I see one section in the corner is covered with your picture. I don't know how to get that out. Oh, like that. Huh? Uh, I don't know how to do it. I can see, but the end is always covered up. Okay, why don't I do it this way? Uh huh. Wait, uh, hold on. Uh. Let me. Uh... Is it my phone that is. I think it's your phone. Uh. Well, I don't know how. I don't know how to do it. I'm more smarter than that. Can you see now? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's small, I pinched up. Yeah, good, that's good. Okay, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Okay. Thank you for reading. Let me mute. Okay, it's muted. Huh? Always good to use a laptop lah, to, uh, so that you can see better. Of course, phone lah, has its limitations because of the small screen. Now, the first thing we experience when we have this covenantal relationship lah, with Jesus, lah, and we will have joy to the full. Right, uh, joy is what we have. So, what is joy? So, Jesus promised we will enjoy full joy after his second coming. But the joy of this new covenant is something we can enjoy today, it is an integral part of the kingdom of God now and part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This joy is not brief happiness, but inner peace. Okay, there's a different kind of joy. Huh? The 70 were filled with joy when they share the gospel. Anyone who accepts the gospel is filled with joy too. So this is a joy where only God can give. And the joy you experience is when you obey God. Okay, you feel good that you are at peace with God. Just believing in Jesus is enough to receive that joy. As the Apostle John explained, the source of our joy is to meditate on the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, and to have a personal relationship with God. Okay, so joy, a very important uh, thing that we experience. Uh, let's come to this discussion now. Uh. Although we have the promise of joy when we embrace a new covenant relationship with Jesus, why do we still experience doubts, sickness, and all the heartaches and disappointments like the rest of the unbelievers? I think many of us also experience this, right? When you accept Jesus as your personal savior, you still have the same father, mother. You still have the same problems, uh, you still work in the same environment, you live in the same neighborhood, uh, those who have sickness, you still have your sick sickness. Very likely that like, this doesn't go away. Okay? Your environment, your circumstances are still the same. Now, how can we experience joy when we still have all these problems in life? How do you answer Let's have some discussion. Anyone want to start? Is the question real or do we experience this? And sometimes people say, when I accept Jesus, I have even more problems. Yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, because uh, Pastor Chan, we are still living in this world and this world has full of problems and sickness and uh, uh, evil things that we have to, have to go through. But the joy in the background will give us the courage and strength to, to handle them. Do you think so? Okay. So can you experience joy in spite of your present circumstances that has not changed much? And sometimes when you accept Christ, you have even more problems. Yes, you yeah, prepare for that. You must prepare for that. Okay. 
What about the rest? The but rest. Uh, Pastor, yeah. when you take up the cross that Jesus asked you to take up, he did not promise you any uh, thing that is like forever joy. He said that you have to face a lot of tribulations, challenges, uh, people who want to uh, put you down because you are a Christian. That's what I know. So, but the joy that he promises is a special joy that only we Christian knows and we enjoy it with him as our Savior and Lord. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Sharing. What about the rest? Let's, let's have some interaction. Uh, Annie? Hi, good morning. Good yeah, morning. I feel that it gave me the strength. This joy has a, a very special strength. You, you don't feel tired in spite of having, experiencing the turbulence in life, ups and downs. But you have the courage, you have the strength to pull through and you, you find it, there's a glow in your face. You find that, uh, you know, there's spark that give you the extra strength to move on. And my friend also experienced that. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing. What about the rest anymore? Okay, let's have a follow-up question. God promises us joy as believers in Jesus. Is joy the same as happiness? Should we always be happy? If we are not, is there something wrong with our Christian experience? What can the life of Jesus reveal that help us understand the answers to these questions? So in other words, is joy the same as happiness? Are you supposed to be happy all the time? Should we always be happy? Uh, somebody said that Christians are the happiest people on earth. So if we do not feel happy or we are not happy, is there something wrong? Yes or no? Let's open for discussion. What about the rest who have not shared? Huh? Uh, Victor, Paul, Melissa, feel free to... No, I uh, think, uh, yeah. sorry, I think joy and happiness are two different things altogether. Joy is in happiness. Just is a very uh, temporary thing. And so when we are happy sometimes, then we are sad, and we are you know. But joy is something I think it's called given and so on. Something that yeah. How, how do I how do I express it? I mean, some something you feel much deeper inside you rather than the, just being happy and so on. I think happiness is superficial. Joy is more deep rooted. Okay. Uh... Thank you, Paul, for your insightful differentiation on happiness and joy. What about the rest? Actually, uh, happiness is a part of our emotions. Sometimes we feel we wake up, we feel happy. You know. What about happiness is uh, circumstantial? Do you feel happy when you have good grades? Uh, do you feel happy that when your children have good grades? Or do you feel happy that uh, today you go to market and you bought what you want? You know, everything fall within your expectation. You feel happy. So that's happiness, isn't it? So sometimes we use the word joy and happiness interchangeably, but actually there are a lot of differences. The worldly people or the unbelievers, they also are happy. And some people have less problem. When you have less problems in life, you are more happy. You are born in a rich environment. You have good parents. They may not be believers, but they are more happy than those Christians who have more problems. Okay. So what do you think? Let's look at the question again. Eh? 
Should we always be happy? All right. There is a saying uh, to try to be happy without reason and you will be happy in every season. Okay, I would like to suggest to be happy uh, in every season is joy. Uh, joy is Jesus first, other second, put yourself last. That is uh, following the example of Jesus. So when you are uh, very sacrificial, if you follow, if you deny yourself, take up the cross and follow Jesus, you experience joy. So joy is one of the fruit of the spirit as a result of obedience in Jesus through obedience to the law. Happiness is dependent on circumstances within your expectation. So joy is a choice you make to be positively resilient in spite of challenges, trials and tribulation. So we should not let our default human feelings uh, take over, which is very circumstantial. So the people living in this world without hope of eternal life. There is no covenantal relationship with Jesus. They do not experience that joy. Okay, joy for us, we have a future hope. Okay, we have present promises. And we are obedient to Jesus. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So our lives become changed. So we make a conscious choice to be happy, you know. So the statement, I try to be happy without reason, is very difficult. It's only through Jesus, then you can have joy. What do you think? Do you agree with my uh, sharing? Remember, it's an interactive study. You're supposed to contribute. Question. Yeah, Melissa. Do you think Job is happy? Was happy when he he had God, and he but everything was taken from him. So, do you think that point in time he was happy? Or not? Not post to you. To everyone can answer. Okay, this is a very difficult question. And there's no doubt about that. Uh, I would dare say that no one in this lesson or most of the people that we know experienced the, the deprivation of joy. No one. Okay. So during that time, how do you experience joy? So I would say I would say he will have unswerving faith during that time. The faith that cannot be explained. Okay. You know, I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think if Job had uh, had seemed happy with his suffering, then people would think that he's a crazy old man and so on. Because, you know, nobody who's suffering will be la laughing and happy and so on. Because, but like I said, joy is a different thing. You know, although he is a suffering and he's in agony and so on, he still have this joy because he can still say that. Though he though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So the joy that he has is given, but like you see, is is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So with that, I think he has he had a, he had joy and a comfort that no matter what happened to him, God knows his problem, and God was somehow you know, and he was, he also believed that you know that he did not commit any sin that causes him to suffer in that way and so on. So I I, I think. I have to really say again that joy and happiness are two different things altogether. Okay, thank you, Paul. I, uh, think, I, think, yeah. I think I agree with Paul. Um, I think Job, I mean, it does come as Paul talking. I think Job, as a person, he's happy, but he didn't have joy. He having pain and suffering on the other way around when, uh, yeah, then he but he has God. 
He has happiness in him. He has peace. He has the savior. But when everything was given back to him, he had both joy and happiness. So can one be happy and yet no joy or joy without happiness? Okay, coming back to your question, uh, Melissa. Uh, there are certain things that Job didn't know. Uh, for example, he didn't know that there was a great controversy between God and Satan. Uh, there was an invitation to test him. He didn't know that. Now, had he known that, he would be very joyful. Why? Because he knew through his conscious choice to stay faithful. And God is believing in him so much that he can use him as a challenge to prove that you need not bless human beings to experience faithfulness. And these people by faith will still believe in me in spite of their suffering. But because Job didn't do that, he did not experience full joy. Now for us, it's different. Eh? For us, we experience, uh, we not experience, we study, we know that regardless of what happened to us, God is still in control. And this life is not a life to be carried on. And we have a better hope, a better future. In spite after our prayer, our loved ones still pass away. In spite of our prayer, we still have our present problem. We know God will deliver us. And that is enough reason for us to choose joy. I give you a good example. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, uh, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. Jesus said, if you fast, huh, don't be like the hypocrites. Go and disfigure themselves to show people that you are uh, fasting. When you fast, you put on oil, you anoint yourself, put on new clothes. Don't show that you are suffering or you are fasting. And you will, your reward is great in heaven. So in other words, joy is actually a conscious choice to stay faithful to God and knowing that ultimately we will be delivered. If not in this earth, we, our reward will be great. And this joy, uh, you can talk for a long, long time because it's not a theory, it's not a knowledge. It's an, an, it's an experiential uh, thing. It's only when you experience it, then you can uh, feel joy. Okay? You cannot really fully describe joy. Okay, let's go on. Huh? Thank you for all your contribution. Like I say, you will put Jesus first, others second, yourself last. But usually, Christians who don't experience joy, they always put themselves first, others second, and then Jesus last. And uh, let's, let's be aware of all this. Okay? Uh, happiness is dependent on circumstances. Joy is a choice. Okay? To stay positively resilient in spite of challenges. Okay, Victor, can you read this for us? Romans 8 verse 1. Okay. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to, his spirit, to the Spirit. Yeah, now we are given uh, one enlightenment. Even though the world around us is terrible, there is no reason to be happy but we don't walk according to the flesh. No one can deny that everyone has sinned. However, Jesus forgives all our sins through his blood in the new covenant. Therefore, we are free from the burden of guilt. And God liberates us from sin and from remorse. If God forgives our sins, shouldn't we do the same? This does not mean that we should deny our sins. Since Jesus paid for our sins, we no longer live under their condemnation. So when we, the reason why we experience joy is because, you know, we are sinners. No matter what we do, we still sin. And we 
often fall into temptation, even in a new body. Uh, sorry, in, even in our renewed mind. Okay, full understanding of the knowledge of Jesus. In this sin sick body, we are still tempted. We still feel guilty of our past sin. Okay. But we, we know Jesus will forgive us as long as we sincerely repent of our sin. Jesus made it very clear. He who uh, put a plow on the field and look back is not worthy of me. Okay? We must be forward looking. Okay, let's discuss this very important question. Knowing and accepting God's forgiveness of our sins, how does that help you in dealing with others who have sinned against you? How should it impact the way you deal with those people? So another question is, another way to ask is, if you have been forgiven by God, should you also use the same degree of forgiveness to those who have sinned against you? Should you? How should it impact the way you deal with those people? Okay, this is a very, very practical question. There's a saying, uh, it's easier to keep the commandments of God. Very, very hard to forgive your enemies. Is that true? Let's discuss. Huh? Those who have not shared, please uh, unmute and uh, give us your opinion. Uh, Lawrence. Yeah, Pastor. I think Jesus gave an example. He was asked the same question by the disciple. And he said, 70 times 7 times you must forgive. Not only once, twice, but 70 times 7. That's how he uh, illustrated the example of forgiveness. Under any circumstances, we have to forgive. Yeah, but this is theory, isn't it? In reality, are you able to do it? You have to follow the example. That's why he said. Yeah. So following Jesus' example, uh, to forgive. So actually, if you forgive the unforgivable, if you love those who are unlovable, you are not walking according to the flesh. Okay, Because you have the Holy Spirit. The problem is, we know what we should do, but we do not have the strength to follow it. And very often we react. Okay? If somebody is insulting you or, or has offended you, you would like to uh, get back at people. Isn't that so? Yes, Catherine. If you don't uh, forgive, uh, it will be detrimental to your own health. You know, if you keep all the <clears throat> anger and what I heard or whatever, you will feel um, your health won't be so good. Okay. It, so, Catherine, stay where you are. Uh, it's not only detrimental to your own health, but you think it's detrimental to your spiritual life? Definitely, yeah. How, the, how, how will it be detrimental to your spiritual life? How to come to God? God said to forgive, then you come back, come to me. God said you must forgive first, then you can come to me, right? In the, oh, no, 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 no. God didn't say that. Eh? Yeah, in the... Uh, where, you the are Lord's forgiven, prayer. therefore you the must... Lord's prayer. The Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Forgive others, then you, you can come to me. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, actually, we seek God's forgiveness first. We don't forgive other people, then we come to God. Okay, we, we ask God to forgive us first. Then, ha having been forgiven, we must forgive others. Because if we are not forgiven, how can we have the strength to, to ask God to forgive us? So, God must come first. Okay? Yeah. God must give the power also uh, to help us to forgive. Correct. But you must receive God's forgiveness. You must be free from guilt. Alright. Anyone else? 
Uh, we are all humans in a fallen world, all deserving of death. But because of God's forgiveness, we have a new life. And who is that? Uh? I'm GM. I'm Diana's student. Oh, GM. Okay. Diana student. Diana David, is it? Yes. Okay. Be- so I was saying, because of for- God's forgiveness, we, we, all, we all have a new life through Jesus. Yeah. And since we are all made in God's image, so in, in that sense, it, it helps me to better put myself in other shoes and to be more forgiving. Yes. In fact, uh, forgiveness of others uh, is an indication of your right relationship with God. Okay? That means uh, if you are able to forgive others, you are able to fully accept the forgiveness God has given you. Right. And also, uh, God also said that uh, vengeance is his. Correct. So we, we none of us, are, are perfect like God. So we cannot take matters into our own hands. I think I like your answer because uh, it's true, you know. Sometimes uh, you are being persecuted so much uh, and the persecution has no end. Instead of taking matters into your own hands, like what you said, we should ask, we should claim the promise that vengeance is mine. Yeah, actually, the vengeance is mine. Eh? You don't pray for your enemy to suffer terribly. You don't pray like that. In fact, the Bible says in Romans, eh, bless those who persecute you. Okay, If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. In that way, you are uh, heaping you know, coals on his head means uh, he will feel so bad. So this is the not walking according to the flesh. This is a very powerful uh, example of how Christ can be seen in our lives on how we forgive others, how we treat others. Although it's not easy. Uh, some people will an eye for an eye, a two for a two. So the question would be, how should it impact the way you deal with those people? Sometimes it's not easy, you know. You know, in my uh, four years of uh, doing business, uh, there are some people who owe me money, but never pay back. Okay, Not only don't pay back, uh, become very nasty. And it's not one or two dollars, you know, it's a lot of money. It's, of course, you feel wrong, uh, you know, the person should pay back. And then the, the temptation is for you to uh, sue the person to get back the money. I tell you, this is really a test of your faith. But I believe that when we lose our earthly possessions, God will give us something better. And God has a reason why he put us to the test. Okay, he will definitely deliver me uh, from all my troubles. Okay. By the way, eh, the more you are close to God, eh, the more you are put into a situation eh, where you are forced to exercise your faith in God. Don't you think so? Just like in a school. Eh? If you are in school, definitely there will be quizzes, there will be tests, there will be exams. Same here, you are in a school of faith. Your faith will be tested by all these adverse circumstances that are contrary to your ways that you are planning to walk. So brothers and sisters, stay, stay faithful to God. Okay, In spite of adverse circumstances, God will ultimately deliver you. Okay, let's ask uh, Annie to read this. Uh, Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep 
is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know that this small quotation, you can preach many, many sermons in it. You know, Apostle Paul, who have experienced the fullness of God's love, he being a persecuted, a persecutor, became the persecuted. He experienced uh, being an enemy of God to being enemies where wanted to kill him. So we, through this, because God loved him so much, he became an instrument to share this love of Jesus. In order for him to say, you know, how wide, long, high and deep is God's love. And then he said, this love uh, surpasses knowledge. That means you cannot talk about it. It's beyond discussion. Okay, Catherine, can you read this for us? And we have known, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. First John 4, 16. So our thoughts and feelings are transformed when we know the love of God and believe in it, we are given a new heart and a new way of thinking and feeling. The law of God is written on our hearts and our thoughts are filled with love towards God and our neighbors. When Christ's love, oh sorry, when Christ lives in our hearts, our faith and our understanding of God's love grow. We are filled with all the fullness of God. So we are ready to re reflect Christ. Okay, so our mindset is very important. What is your mindset today? Okay, uh, is your mindset still very worldly? Are you uh, complaining like the rest of the unbelievers who only focus on negative things in life? Or are you somebody who look for things to affirm? Look for opportunity to give thanks. So our default nature is to complain, is to gossip, is to say bad things. Our spirit feel nature okay is to have god's love written in our hearts okay i tell you uh, the more you spend time on negative things uh, this thought will grow the more you spend time talking about love of god uh, this spirit life uh, will grow so are you feeding your sinful carnal life or are you feeling or are you feeding your spirit life? I think that's the key we need to ask ourselves. What do you think? Do we spend time uplifting Christ? Or do we spend time glorifying the, the devil? So a lot of people don't know that. By encouraging this sinful human thoughts, eh? we become very, very worldly. So how can we be joyful? How can we be free from remorse and guilt? How can we love others if our thoughts are not changed? That's why the word repent is actually has to do with your mind. You make a decision to follow Jesus. That's why there's a song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. But of course, sometimes we turn back. But whenever you turn back, eh, there is a U-turn for you to come back. So today, 
God is inviting all of us to make a U-turn to come back. If we have been walking on the wrong path, okay, turn back. So today probably we should ask God to change our thoughts. Uh. Okay. Okay, next one. Uh. Okay, we ask Claire to read for us. Claire, are you there? Would you unmute to read John 11, 25 to 26? Um, yeah. Okay. One moment. Uh, the hope of eternal life. Jesus said to her, oh, I can't read that one. The resurrection and the life. Uh, he believed in me. Though he may die, he shall live. But whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John 11, 25 to 26. Okay, thank you. We have the hope of eternal life. What is this hope? Now we realize that there are two kinds of death. The first death which everyone will suffer. And the second death is, which is eternal. There will be no resurrection from the second death. Only those who are not registered in the book of life will suffer it. There is those who decided not to believe in Jesus. They will experience the second death. And this second death is permanent. Now, um, in case you forget, uh, every teaching, every truth that is taught in the Bible, the devil wants to counterfeit it. One of the most cunning counterfeit that the devil put in our hearts and minds is that the second death uh, is actually a perpetual suffering in hell. No such thing. Eh? Death means death. Okay. First death is everybody will experience it. I mean, except Enoch eh, and a few of them. Actually, only Enoch. Eh. Okay, the rest of them are... Uh, and Elijah. Elijah. Uh, Elijah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, only two persons uh, did not experience uh, first death. Uh. The rest of them are ex uh, experience, those who are in heaven, uh, they experience the first fruits of resurrection. They did not have second death. For us, we are waiting for our first death and then we will not have second death. Because Jesus is going to resurrect us. Jesus assured us that we will not suffer eternal death. This hope impacts the way we live today. Our perspective is different when we understand that the grave is not our end, but eternal life is. So we begin to enjoy eternal life when our open hearts to Jesus, when we open our hearts to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So the reason why we experience great joy is because we don't deserve to, to live eternally. Actually, we don't. There's nothing we can do. Okay, we study in a few lessons. Our righteousness are filled, like filthy rags. But because of the love of Jesus, God himself created us. God, through Jesus Christ, created us. And Jesus as the creator die on our behalf. There's no value that you can place on this gift. Okay? There's no value. Okay, I want to tell you, uh, let's go back to what we discussed earlier. You see, the rich young ruler wants to have eternal life, but he doesn't want to have abundant life. Actually, yeah, uh, Abundant life huh, is more than eternal life. Why? <laughs> because eternal life huh, is just an end. Abundant life huh, is a journey. Okay? Abundant life huh, is actually knowing Jesus, having joy, having peace, having a mission in our life. That is abundant life. It <laughs> Wow, did you hear that? 
It's a big thunder. The thunder, loud one. I think God heard my statement. Uh. It's moved by what I said. Abundant life uh, is what we can experience today. Eternal life uh, is going to be enjoyed later on. So I want you to know this uh, great uh, encompassing truth. God wants us to have abundant life now, not later. You can experience the abundant life today. And when you experience the abundant life today, you will have eternal life. But if you don't have the abundant life today, you will not have eternal life. The rich young ruler just wants to have eternal life. That's why Jesus said, if you want to enter life. Good master, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, if you want to enter life. So that's a difference. Huh? I think Everyone wants to have eternal life. Even Shi Wang Ti, even the wicked. Okay, If there is a pill uh, for you to take that it can help you to live forever, uh, people will pay any price. Okay, But unfortunately, this is a counterfeit theory. Okay, Shi Wang Ti believe in it. And in the end, he lost it. You lose it. So for us, we found an answer. Okay, and this is the way, the truth, and the life. We got it. Okay, we thank God for the eternal life that He has given us. Okay, we ask uh, Melissa to read for us. First Peter two verse nine. We haven't heard you yet. Eh? We cannot hear you. Okay. But you are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Again, now this is a very loaded verse. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Okay? Who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are in spiritual darkness if we do not know Jesus. So this world is full of darkness. That's why there are all sorts of sin and degradation in this world. But after you know Jesus, God has given you a spiritual eye to understand what is happening to you. So accepting God's covenant and becoming part of his chosen people involves a mission. And this mission is to announce the gospel in our daily lives, okay, to our, to our neighbors, to our business associates. Joy, liberation from guilt, new thoughts, the hope of eternal life. We should not keep these things to ourselves but to share them. This is a mission with eternal repercussions. It can change the destiny of those who hear the news. It is news of life leading to life. And Christ is preached. And in this, I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. So, you and I uh, cannot experience, cannot preach the gospel if we do not experience joy, liberation from guilt, if we do not have new thoughts and we do not have the hope of eternal life. So, so in your association with others, you like to complain and you're not happy. And then your thoughts are worldly. And then you are, you are very self-centered. That means uh, your life journey uh, Jesus is not part of your life, you know. That means Christianity is just your religion, you know. If Christianity is just our religion, we only take it out when we need it. We don't need it, we put it back in our pocket. It's not like that. This gospel of eternal life, this gospel of Jesus Christ, is part of our life, is our whole life. 
Okay, it encompasses everything that we do. Even in our thoughts, in our decisions, okay, whether what we study, what we are gonna eat, who, what friends we are gonna make, what entertainment we choose, all surround our life, our decision. That is, we are actually living for God. We are actually preparing to go to heaven. We will be very miserable huh, if we go to heaven while we are still living our old life. Okay? Anyone has any thoughts? Okay, we asked somebody to read this. Huh? Uh, uh, GM. Actually, I don't know what's your name, but can you read for us the summary? The covenant is not just some deep theological concept. Instead, it defines the perimeters of our saving relationship with Christ, a relationship that reaps us wonderful benefits now and at its his return. Yeah, I think that summarizes our covenant with Jesus. Okay, when you have this covenant with God, it's not something that you must do or will do. And then after that, it's done. You keep it in one corner. It's not Okay, it defines our parameters of our saving relationship with Jesus. And then as a result, you bear this fruit of this relationship. Joy, uh, free from guilt and remorse, hope of eternal life and have a mission to, serve, to, to preach this gospel. This is a wonderful message that we have to share. Okay, let's... Let's read the last one. Uh, David, can you read this for us, David? All right. As through Jesus, we enter into rest. Heaven begins here. We respond to his invitation. Come, learn of me. And in thus coming, we begin the, eternal, the, the life eternal. Heaven is a ceaseless approaching to God through Christ. The longer we are in the heaven of bliss, the more and still more of glory will be open to us. And the more we know of God, the more intense will be our happiness. As we walk with Jesus in this life, we may be filled with his love, satisfied with his presence. Alan G. White, Desire okay. Ages. Do you know that this is a very powerful statement? Heaven actually begins now, you know, not when we reach there. We, while we are on the journey towards heaven, we can experience heaven today. Okay? And only the Holy Spirit can give us that mindset. Only the Holy Spirit can change our whole life. That's why Jesus said, unless you are born again, you can never enter the kingdom of God. Only a born again experience can enable us to begin this journey. So today, let us repent of our sins, change our thoughts, make a decision to be joyful as we choose to put on the path of uh, experiential relationship, experiential covenantal relationship with Jesus. Any questions? Anything to add before we end? Uh, Pastor Chan, I'm thinking of the time of trouble. The time of trouble when we are still alive, you will be extremely tested the extreme. What do you think? Uh, Lawrence, you went to school before when you were in primary one the test is not so great. When you're primary one, your main exam is PSLE. When you're in secondary school, your main exam is O level. When you're in pre-U, your main exam is A level. So if you are not preparing uh, for your PSLE, O level or A level, you will be very afraid. Same here, today is a day where you prepare. Not, not just today, uh, many days before. 
So if you are every day overcoming your sinful human nature, when you come to the great test, uh, you will not be afraid. Right? Uh? It is only those uh, who are neglect, who have great neglect uh, in their daily tasks. They are self-centered. They are very uh, carnal-minded. They are very gossiping. They don't study their Bible. So when their great test come, do you think you will stand? You won't stand. That's true. Right? Uh, so right now, the problems you have uh, are a rehearsal you know, to the great test to come, the final test. So don't worry, uh, Lawrence. You only worry uh, when you are not right with God. Okay, okay, understand. Okay, understand. Huh? So, understand is one thing. Put into your, put into practice is another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's end with prayer. Huh? Unless uh, somebody else has something else to say. Let's end with prayer. Oh, dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the showers of blessing again. And this time, the showers of blessing is the letter rain that refreshes our mind to remind us that you are still the love of God, the God of love. You are still in control while the world is in lockdown and pandemic. You are still in control even though our lives are still the same. We are still sickly. We are getting older. We are getting forgetful. We are getting weaker. But Lord, even though all these are fading our spiritual life our physical life is weakening may our spiritual life grow from strength to strength may may our thoughts continue to be enlightened knowing the depth the length the breath of your love for us help us that our joy will be overflow so that others can see jesus in us Help us to love others as Jesus loved them. Help us to forgive our enemies as Jesus has forgiven them. Oh Lord, forgive our sins and make us right before you. And sanctify us as we journey towards heaven. And one day while we experience glorification with Jesus, there will be endless, ceaseless praise where heaven will be within reach. Lord, we know it's easier to be, it's harder to be lost. It's so easy to be saved. May you encourage us to make the right decision, to choose to be joyful always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. May you all be you. Thank 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 you.